I'm going to be honest, don't really know what I'm doing. He was often a player that I would buy on Football Manager. That's it's already a terrible reason. From Jon Snow, Matt puts Dan's wardrobe to shame. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Look at him, the cat that got the cream. Ian Taylor said it was the worst thing he'd ever seen in his life. Monk, really, he's, what's he, I know Monk. he's manager. What kind of thing is that? Gary Monk. Five out of ten. I haven't finished yet. I cannot believe Gabby had Bonner Horse. That's crazy, that's isn't terrible. it? That's terrible. Yeah, we may well have lost listeners early doors again with a long, long-winded intro. Go, shoot. Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast. We believe it's episode number 17. For the first time, we actually haven't gone back and checked, so let's hope that that's correct. A difficult seven days for Villa or so since we last did the podcast. As ever, I'm joined by Thomas Julian. Tom, you well? Um, I, no, actually, I'm not. Uh, I've got a sore throat, and uh, my wife gave it to me, and she refuses to go to the doctors, so I'm not particularly happy about that, going on holiday on Saturday. Uh, apart from that, and the football's terrible. Uh, yeah, it is. Life's great. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, Costa Brava, an Costa. hour from Barca. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did tell me that. You yeah. did tell me that. I did question. Did you say you were going to go to the new Camp, or did you tell me you weren't going to go to the new no, Camp? No, we're not going to the new Camp. I'm going on a stag do to... Uh, uh, to Madrid, so we're gonna we're doing a little bit of a, a stadium tour. Then we're going on a stag do while you're there, or oh, that's a different. No, that's, that's a, a different different, diff- different trip. trip. So this this is more just relaxing for my uh, me and my wife moved house. You know, we need a little yeah, break. You need a chill. Yeah. You are working too hard. Obviously, you've started a new job recently as well. New shirt for Tom today. He was telling me before he came in. So those watching via YouTube can see his new purple <laughs> garment. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a light purple for anyone. <laughs> who, who is interested? Should we go into the football instead of your poor shirt selection? Whoa! No, it's fine. Yeah. I'm joking. It's fine. Thank you it's so fine. much. Five out of ten. Uh, it's just always a plain shirt, isn't it? With you, it's never you never like it's never any pattern. Well, it's, well, it's work, it's isn't work. it? Sometimes stripes, but that's about it. I've gone into winter mode with a jumper today, and I'm very hot in here, which so that is a mistake. Yeah. Unless it's... I'm coming down with your flu bug. Well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice. Let's talk about football if we have to, shall we? Yeah. Go on, and let's just. I'm fed up of talking about it to oh. be honest, but let's do it. All it's, right, it is a football podcast. So we're going. It's unavoidable. Yeah, let's start with the Brentford game. Nil nil at home. Very very disappointing performance. Uh, I think all round. You know, you were there. You yeah. felt felt the atmosphere. There must have been some positivity as we started the game. Sorry, like I mean, Brentford have started pretty poorly. I think they were 23rd or 24th, um, and you know, Villa at home coming off eight goals in two games. There must have been a do you know what we're gonna we're gonna hit this and we're gonna hit it hard? No, I never felt like that. Really? No, I did. I remember saying on one of the podcasts that Brentford had due some luck. Unfortunately for us, they didn't get any again. But they they played us off off the park. We were, we were terrible. Mm-hmm. There's no other way of dressing it up. We were absolutely awful. It was it was dire. We didn't do anything of note until I think it was the 81st minute or so. James Chester had our first shot on target and at the start of a, of a statement month where we've said September's going to be our month, we've done our business, we're happy with with what we've done, to start the month as a damp squib is, is not good enough. Yeah, it goes back to, I mean, Sam Johnston was our man of the match again, wasn't he? You know, that happened in the first couple of games this season. And when that happens, you don't need to read any other match report. You know that your team hasn't played particularly well if your goalkeeper is the one that's having to bail you out. I mean, you can say how are Brentford bottom of the league, but I can tell you how. Complete misfortune because I believe they've been the better team in most games that they've played and they were far superior for us. Their movement off the ball, their passing. I mean, little Ginger Ryan Woods. Mm-hmm. In, I don't know why I said Ginger. That's was too much time with Ginger Luke, just calling out <laughs> Gingers. But Ryan Woods in the middle of the park. It was not difficult to see what was happening because we've played Brentford twice before and the exact same thing has happened on those two occasions. He absolutely run the game, but... He run the game because we let him have the ball in, in acres of space. We didn't press. There was there was no urgency at all in the first half, especially. He was just spraying balls round all over the place. And with a bit more luck, they'd have got him behind a few more times than they did in the first half. I mean, I know people might not like Scott Hogan, but I said after the game, if they'd have had Scott Hogan up front, they'd have, they'd have won 3-0 Yeah, because he would have finished some of those chances. Yeah, well, he had our one chance on target, didn't he? Um, and, and that wasn't... It, it just... Just felt really lacklustre, didn't it? And and like you said, there it's a statement month, and to start it off with a nil nil and follow it up with another nil nil, which we'll obviously get to. You know, we had people on here on the podcast a couple of weeks ago who were saying, and and we were saying as well, kind of twelve, fourteen points was kind of the minimum from from six games. And I mean, Dolan was saying eighteen points. That one's blown out the window. Yeah. Um, 
Chris what? Dolan's cursed us. I think we can maybe put the start of this month down to him. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go and say. That's, uh, yeah, not good. I'd, I'd, do you know what? I'd, I'd, I feel a bit sorry for, for Brentford manager Dean Smith. I think he's he's doing a decent job there and, and the fact that he couldn't get a win on, on Saturday, which he very much deserved, I think that's, that's fair to say. Um, yeah, quite disappointing for him. He won't be particularly happy being, being down the bottom of the park there. No, and he won't believe that they're down there because, as I say, they play some lovely football. And I believe they've had the most shots on target, or at one stage of the season, they'd had the most shots on target in the league. They're just not fin- finishing their chances. I mean, that's not a problem that Villa had against Brentford. The problem we had against Brentford was we, we didn't create anything. We, we, we stifle ourselves at times. I mean, I'm talking about Ryan Woods and their players having the energy and the effervescence to, to make things happen. We were just so pedestrian. Like, we are almost just like waiting for something just waiting for someone to make a mistake on the other team rather than trying to pursue the matter, the matter ourselves. It's just, it's not good. And as we keep saying, at the start of a month where you've said you, you've, you've got to hit a certain amount of points, we need to get ourselves back in contention. We're still on the same amount of points as games played and that, that isn't good enough. And I think we've we scored, it was eight we've scored. Seven and seven, isn't it? Is it seven we've scored? Something well? like that. That's like, it's, it's not good enough. Yeah. That's no, terrible. Um, you had the pleasure, or the uh, the pain, should I say, of doing fan cams on Saturday afternoon. What was the what was the general mood, if if you even need to tell us? It's just frustration, because the the supporters go down. There's never in the league less than twenty seven thousand there. They, the the fans do give their all, and there's been a lot of criticism of the fans. I've heard people people say, and to be honest, it's been something that I've always said. We we've got to get behind the team, and, and we and we do have to get behind the team. And I can say now. Completely disagree with any form of booing at any stage. It's counterproductive. It's pointless. I mean, after the Brentford game, the players came to the fans and people were booing, telling them to clear off. That's not on. Mm-hmm. I know they've put in a bad performance. They'll know they've put in a bad performance. But at least they've had, well, not all of them, but at least most of them have had the guts to come up to the fans and acknowledge the support. You can't be booing players when they're, when they're doing that. That's, that's not on. But I get that the atmosphere can be quite negative and there's a big expectation at Villa Park at home and obviously we've only won one of our home games so far, albeit we've won it quite quite well. But there's not that atmosphere away from home and we're no good away from home. So I don't think it can be used as an excuse, although I don't think it's on. I don't think it can be used as an excuse yeah, anymore. Yeah, I mean, I was, at, I was at the Reading game earlier earlier in the year and, I, and there was booing there and okay. that, that, that atmosphere wasn't positive then either. Fair play, we'd come off a torrid start to the season you know th- three quite ugly games um and i and, and you can see where the where the fans frustration is building up and i agree with you i don't see where the benefit of booing comes but at the same time i understand that people are paying their well earned money to watch really drab and 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 disappointing football especially when you know we we've set our stall out to be up the top of the league you know leading the way and and we're we're so far off the pace that we're in danger of, of ruling ourselves out of automatic promotion with only six or seven games gone. Yeah, automatic is going to be a massive, massive, like, it's, it's not going to happen, is it? That's a massive uphill task now for us. And that's what that's what the aim was. That's what people within the club were saying. So when we're not near there, fans have got every right to question things because it's it's what people within the club were saying. We, automatic promotion needs to happen this season. We need to at least be challenging and we're not and albeit we're only five points off the playoffs at the current stage if we don't pick up results that gap's then going to widen of course it is yeah now, if being five points off the playoffs is fine after seven games but <laughs> there's a there's a, such a long season left to go and you need to start you need to start strongly but you need to find some form now and really and really push on and in this month where we've got six games winnable games and a Carabao Cup game as well you know no, we I'll need just, I want us out of that to be honest do you yeah it's I mean, I know we're just playing the reserves and we're giving people fitness days. It'll be a good chance to give Codger some fitness, uh-huh. I'd imagine, next week. But we're not going to win the Cup. We're not going to try and win it. So I'd, I'd just rather it wasn't there. Because it's just another game where injuries and stuff can happen. I mean, injuries for sure. It did, I mean, it, our best performances have kind of come from the from the Cup. Um, I wonder if it's something that we could kind of kick on. If a good performance against Middlesbrough, you know, get the right result that you'd probably deserved from Tuesday night and maybe that's the catalyst but again maybe you've been saying that before and and maybe you're right maybe it's just a danger that we don't need one thing I will say about the fans actually I think at the start of the game players are doing the warm up they come and applaud the, applaud the crowd before the game starts the crowd are behind them but then there is a there is a minority and again I'm not blaming this is the reason we're not doing well because it's not the reason mm-hmm. 
as soon as we start misplaying a few passes or or if we play the ball around the back and we're not really going anywhere straight away, we're just keeping the ball, not with any purpose, the fans do get get tetchy and then inevitably someone will end up lumping it forward. And the fans don't like that either. So you can't have it both ways. But we are behind the team from the start. It's just as, at the end of games, at half-time, if, if we're not winning, there is the people that like a boo. And it's not. And I was quite encouraged by the fact that at the end of the game at Middlesbrough, there was some booing by the people that will always boo if Aston Villa haven't won a football match. And some of these people, to be honest, would boo if we'd won. Right. That's sometimes, if they didn't like the performance, yeah. that, that there is an element, not many, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some that would boo. But then there was the rest of the crowd were clapping because on Tuesday they did give their all. They were unlucky on another day they would have won. But then you counteract that with Saturday where we were mm-hmm. very, very lucky to come away with a point. So yeah. it swings and roundabouts. Yeah, we'll get on to uh, Tuesday in just a minute. There's a few comments that we wanted to bring up from, from the fan camps from the Brentford game. First one from Neil Painter, who's a, a Barnsley fan. Trust me, going to Villa is not our cup final, you kittens. Not sure what. Oh, your kittens means your no. your kid. I think oh, he's spelled, mean rubbish. No, I think he's spelt your wrong. It should be you are kittens. So he's saying that we're rubbish. Yeah, that we're we're pussy oh, yeah, cats. We may, we may be rub. Oh, I see. Yeah. Instead of lions, it's yeah. probably a fair, probably a fair reflection. I think it was Sam who said the cup final thing, and I think it's something I've said a number of times as well. I don't mean it strictly like that, but it is one of the bigger games. The fans, away fans, will look forward to coming to Villa Park. Because it's a, it is a good day out. And yeah. It's a, it's a historical good ground. It's a big team, one of the biggest teams that's ever been in the championship. So teams, teams will want to come there and away fans will enjoy their day out. But unfortunately, the players of the opposition are enjoying their days out too much as well. Yeah, I think that's the problem, isn't it? It, it doesn't it doesn't feel like a fortress at the moment where you, you go some places away and and it's a real struggle. You know, you, yeah. you're, you're struggling to get anything from. And at the moment, that, and that that's created on the park as well as off it. You know, the, the players have to do their bit to make it a fortress. The, the fans can do all they can, but if they're not seeing the right performances, then, then boos are bound to creep in and that's that's what happens. In uh, fairness, before, sorry, go on, go on. cut you off there. Yeah, yeah. The home form has been very good mm-hmm. in the Championship. We've only lost three times, but I don't know the record off the top of my head. We've drawn too many. We draw too many games already this season. We've drawn against Hull. We've drawn against Middlesbrough. We've drawn against Brentford, and we've beat Norwich. There's too many draws. Although we're unbeaten, there's mm-hmm. too many draws in there. You'd swap a couple of them draws to get to get a win, mm-hmm. to get one win. If you say what I mean. Yeah. Like do you think? Do you think that's part of it as well? The whole kind of, I think, a lot of the the kind of the media around the club and the the. Uh, there's a lot of oh Villa are still unbeaten kind of thing, whereas fans actually go. We're unbeaten, but we're we're not winning, and that that creates a kind of a little bit of a gap in between the fans, and they just they want a bit more honesty in in those performances. Well, at the end of the day, being unbeaten is a fact, but if you put it another way, we've won, won one in four, exactly, right. home, which isn't great. Yeah, so that's three. That's uh, I can't twenty five percent win rate. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's not good. I, well, I wasn't the kind of maths I was doing. I could I could work out. <laughs> I was twenty five percent. That wasn't my problem. What were you I was going a get? stupid way about it. I was trying to do a points thing with the draws as well of how many points we'd taken. Oh, right. I then forgot how many we'd drawn, so that wasn't good. Three points. So we've taken six points from twelve. Yeah. So twenty five percent of the. That's not good, is it? Um, maths j- is obviously not a strong point of the Villa View podcast. No, I I'm don't. Lumping you in with me, even though you've done no mathematical wrongdoing there. No, absolutely not. Uh, Jack Jennings says, "Thank God for Sam Johnston." Yeah. Uh, return of Codger can't come soon enough. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Pimai, Pim, Pimai, Pi May I? Something like that. Go Pimai. Uh, Pimai's 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 definitely right. Um, he, he's a Brentford supporter, so it doesn't really matter that I got it wrong. Uh, he, but he lives in Birmingham. Um, appreciated the honesty of the Villa fans. So the Villa fans are a lot of things, but honesty is probably a good trait that they have. If a team comes and does well, I mean, I've, I've seen worldy goals scored against against Villa at Villa Park, and fans have clapped. The opposition, if it's if it's a really good goal, so we appreciate good football. And Brentford are a good footballing side, the kind of footballer we'd like to see us play. But at the moment, the Brentford nice football has come at the expense of, of, of winning games. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we're playing rubbish football and winning games, I don't think there's going to be too many complaints. But at the moment, we're doing neither. Um, this uh, Brentford 1967. This is Brentford's cup final in in a quotation marks with an attitude like that. No wonder Villa can't beat the smaller teams again in quotation marks. And Pete Holloway says, "I've got two tickets for Burton away who got thumped five nil today. At this display, even they'll turn us over. Shocking Villa, shocking. Well, away from home is worse than home, and home isn't great at the moment. Yeah. So, 
yeah, you wouldn't put it past. I don't see us winning our away games this month at the moment. The way things are, I yeah. don't, just don't see it. I think we'll pick up a couple of wins at home still. But I don't see that, we, that we've got the mentality at the moment still for the away games, and that's a shame. Yeah, Ruben AVFC finishes it with, you know you've had a bad game when the goalkeeper is your best player. He deserves a lot of credit, Sam Johnson. He does. I, even before these two games where he's played well, I said, I said he's been our best player this season. And as someone who was very critical of him when he came in and made some mistakes, and I, to be honest, because I liked Galena, mm-hmm. maybe I let that cloud my judgment a little bit. But he's been very, very good this season, very consistent. And he looks a different goalkeeper. He looks so assured. Everything he's doing, he's doing well. Well, let's move on to the Borough game. Uh, no more goals to talk about, but more shots certainly and and a more positive performance I thought um, I was obviously I watched watched the game and then watched uh, the fan cams and that kind of thing I actually thought we played pretty well and we were obviously uh, the, the fans said it themselves Borough set up to come away with a point no 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 you don't think so no not at all they went to 10 men after 3 minutes well that's so, true so yeah they, ha- they had to change and adapt and do that if they hadn't gone down to 10 men they'd have had a go that's an attacking side that they had, but they, one of their bigger attacking threats who had a very good game at the week and Adama Traoré was off the pitch after three minutes. And that was they me. had to adapt and sit deep, but they had no choice. That's, so that's I don't true. Think, I don't think you can blame Middlesbrough for being negative no. because we did an the exact same... Well, maybe some will say we do it anyway, but we did an the exact same thing if we'd have gone down after after ten, after three minutes. Yeah, I mean, it was a ridiculous challenge, wasn't it, by Adama? Do you think he just... the the kind of occasion and the want to prove himself too just pumped got up. To him. he's too pumped up yeah isn't he? he wants to come and make a statement against his against his old team where in his eyes he probably wasn't ever given a fair crack of the whip i think he should have had a bit more football at villa but i think his lack of intelligence on a football pitch led to him not being picked and that showed on tuesday and that didn't showed it? the edge it's just a rash decision coming off the back of a really good performance where he's where he's really looked like he could take the league by storm again against Bolton because let's face it the quality of the championship isn't as good as the Premier League so mm-hmm. he's got a chance of being a player yeah. in the championship I'd say but then he's just had a moment of recklessness I'm not 100% convinced it was a sending off but I could see why he was sent off because it was late and it was needless Oh, I think it was definitely a sending off he came flying in it was he a did, stupid but it was his, challenge it wasn't his trailing leg that caught him so it wasn't the leg he went in with it I don't, was his trailing I, leg I don't think that stupid. matters no, I, think, no. I think he dived in and I think that's that's the thing that, that gets you in he didn't need football. to do it because he was never no. Other than taking taking Horahan out, yeah. nothing else was going to happen. That was the only end result from what he did. And the ball was was miles away already by the time he'd uh, he'd even got there. So it was a very very stupid foul. But you're right, actually, the Middlesbrough had to change, and they did set up to to kind of hold on, um, and and that they did through through immense amounts of luck. I thought Darren Randolph was okay in goal for for Middlesbrough, but he's a decent keeper actually. Yeah, I thought. Neil Neil Taylor's little chip through to uh, to Lansbury early on, and where Lansbury was trying to trying to dance around the keeper, but that chip I just I've written, written it here sumptuous. I've got to be honest, Neil Taylor's distribution wasn't any uh, other than that wasn't great. No, but that in fairness, yeah, it was that a, was lovely. It was, it, it was a lovely ball through. I think Lansbury was one surprised that he was onside, and two I think Bayman maybe tried to be a bit clever, should have just mm-hmm. put his foot through it. But then as we saw later in the game, when Snodgrass tried to put his foot through it, that's not always the best option. Either, I mean, how we've not scored, mm-hmm. I don't know. Scott Hogan can't catch a break, even though he's not scoring himself as well, to then be clearing shots off the line. I, I feel sorry for the guy, because he was just... <laughs> I don't think he'd get out of the way, way of it. Horahan hit it, hit it quite well, and he just happened to be where he was I, He was standing. Yeah, it's just I, unbelievable. The, the kid can't do anything right, and I really feel for him. I don't think Horahan could have hit it any cleaner, could he? It was such a sweet strike. I mean, in those scrambles... We've had two good chances within each scramble, so four yeah. good chances. It just it just wouldn't go for us. But then Brentford can say the same thing about them on Saturday. Yeah, even even Codger to set up that chance with the header that, good that, that Randolph saved. Yeah, was was a good reaction save. But but that could have broken for you sometimes. I thought actually a positive was because we've talked about Robert Snodgrass quite a lot on this podcast. He was good. I thought he was he showed the kind of uh, mentality and. The quick thinking that you get from a Premier League player, and I thought he was he was really sharp and created a lot of things. He's going to be a real good player for us. He's going to, he could be an actual difference maker that maybe does see us come towards the top six because he's too good for the league mm-hmm. and he affects games. And when he, he's not fit at the moment, I mean he's not naturally blessed with any pace, mm-hmm. but you can tell he isn't fit. His delivery is good. He's putting some good crosses on his right foot actually so far yeah. in, his, in his two 
appearances well. I think he's got a, a winning attitude. You can see he wants to win. He's been there and done that and got promoted. I think he'll be a real, real smart signing for us. There was one point where John Terry raked the ball over from the left-hand side over to Snodgrass in, in acres of space. And it was just a, just a beautiful connection between two, two very, very good footballers. Well, yeah. and, and, and that's what we like to see. That's why I kind of felt... More positive, well, obviously more positive than the Brentford game, but that things could potentially go right for the, for this team. I mean, them two are two proper footballers, two proper yeah. football players who distribute the ball well. John Terry's distribution is fantastic. It's even better than I expected it would be, especially on his on his weaker left foot as well. He rakes the ball round. He's left footed. No, he's right footed. Is he? Yeah. Dear me, Tom. Are you sure? I'm 100 percent sure, but he's very good with his left foot, so that tells you. He always plays on the left hand side. Yeah, though. he just likes to play on the left. He's very good with his left foot, but he's right footed. Yeah, well, as you should be as a as a former England captain, I would I would say. Um, so he played very he played very well, and his distribution was good. But in the first half, he was the only one doing that kind of thing, and we absolutely wasted the first half mm-hmm. because they had 10 men for 42 minutes, and we didn't play with any intensity and urgency. Okay, Middlesbrough is sitting deep. You've got to be clever. You've got to be able to break teams down, especially the amount of creative players we had on the pitch. And we're like, for example, I'm not singling him out because he was someone I wasn't sure about when he came in, and he's done okay so far. But Al Mohamed, he's a right midfielder playing right back, carry the ball forward, and he just wouldn't in mm. the first half. He just wouldn't come forward with the ball. And then the one time he did do it in the second half, he created a really, good, really good chance for us. So I just didn't understand the negativity from the players in the first half. I mean, people say Bruce is a negative manager. And okay, I get that that's something that can be levelled at him. But surely he's not telling them to sit back against 10 men. No, you wouldn't. You, you... And, so, and you can see him on the sidelines. But sometimes he's visibly frustrated at what he's seeing, Bruce. Yeah. Like I don't. I think he is a naturally cautious manager. But I don't think he's as negative as people as people make out. We're not playing the, the right kind of football at the moment. That, that first half was very, very worrying. Whether it be from instruction or whether it be from the players. We played so slowly and we didn't have the nous to make things happen. I mean, Bjarnson... Didn't have a good game. No. At least he moves off the ball. There's not enough movement from the players. But I, I, I saw this and I, I very much agreed with the fact Adoma looked a lot brighter when he came on. Even though he was playing on the left-hand side, yeah. not naturally where, where he might be. I'd prefer to see him playing more and, and be honest and take a back, back seat because... Bjarnason's touch is terrible. You know, he doesn't create as much. And Adoma just looks lively when he comes on. He's, he's, a, he's a really good championship player, Adoma. The trouble is for... I'll come on to Adoma. The trouble for Bjarnason is he's had no run in the team at all. I don't think he's ever played 90 minutes in the league. When he first came, he was shifted into two or three different positions every week. Then he got injured. So he hasn't had a run of games. Play, he's he's, he's one played, of those players that will need a run of games consecutively to see anything good from him. I think he's played a fair bit this this I, uh, I year. He's, I bet you he's never done 90 minutes. Fine, he's dragged but, at half-time. Yeah, he's dragged off half-time. He's, at least he's a player that gets in the box, but I see what you're saying about Doma. He because... definitely played a lot against Reading. I'm sure, I don't know whether he played the whole game, but he... No, he came on, I think. But he hasn't played enough football. He's one of those players that will need to run the games. It's like Hogan. It's no good taking him out and changing the team. This is another thing I want to come on to, so write down. <laughs> OK. In fact, we've, got three or f- we've made three or four changes every single game. So are you going to so come on to this? Or so are you gonna I'm going to come on to it because I want to talk about Doma. Right. We're going to struggle for consistency because we make at least three or four changes every single game. Yeah. Okay, we've had injuries, but that's not the sole reason for making changes. Yeah, and we've talked about this from the start. Like, it's never felt like Bruce has decided on his on his first team. But that, what do you do? Do you have a poor performance like the one at Brentford and then keep the same eleven and hope that it's going to be a different result? What like no. what, what's Bruce supposed to do in that? In I that? don't. I don't know. That's yeah. why I'm not a football manager because I haven't got the answer to that. But it can't be anything but counterproductive change. Making three or four change every game. It can't be. Because there's no rhythm, there's no fluidity, and you can see that on the pitch. I mean, Adoma came on in the second half and at least carried the ball. That was the thing with the team mm-hmm. in the first half. You've got no one who can carry the ball in that team, so you end up just tippy tapping it around, and you're not really playing with any purpose, and you, you're not getting up the pitch because you've got no one who can carry the ball. Again, we're playing so far away from Keenan Davies. The kid's got no chance yeah. up there. Uh, I wanted to get onto your fan cam because I, I strongly disagreed with uh, a couple of guys who you had on the fan cams with who said um, Lansbury red card, never a red card, a red a- card. absolute rubbish. And I was like, I wrote that down. I was like, a couple of gents, opinion, fine. And then I see Dan Bardell come on the fan cam and go, never a red card, nice. never a red card. It was a dreadful challenge. It was like on FIFA when, when your mates threw and you just wipe him. It was I thought it was so unprofessional. Why has it been rescinded then? I, I don't know. I was uh, I was reading Jeff Jeff Winter, former referee Jeff Winter. Oh, yeah, I remember him. He uh, he agreed that it should have been 
uh, sending off. He is a Borough fan as well. It's worth oh, remembering. Is he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's going to say that then, isn't he? Well, no, he's not because he's also a professional re- or an ex-professional referee. He wasn't very professional if my memory says. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just thought it was an awful... I like... I, I see what he was trying to do. Yeah. And I've, I've seen players do it where they just clip the guy and get a booking for him. But to lunge in, and the way he swiped at, at the guy, I can't remember who, who was running, but uh, it was awful. It, was, it, it felt so high and it just felt totally reckless to it's me. a yellow card. I, I can't agree. I, I just think it was an awful challenge and he deserved it. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, the referee's right there. Let me tell you, that ref, Terrible. you haven't seen the 90 minutes, that ref was an absolute sham. Absolute sham. These referees in the championship, they just want to make it all about themselves. I don't they're like little, that argument. No, they're little jumped up men that, no. are, that haven't reached the top of their profession. They're dying to get in the Premier League. They're dying to make a name for themselves. And they go the wrong way about it. I haven't seen a, I have not seen a good referee in the championship yet. And I've seen Villa be on the right end of some of these decisions. But I'm telling you, they're all rubbish. No, that's that's 100% not it's true. Not. I, I've met, I've, I've worked with referees quite a lot um, a few years ago. And I've met referees and they're exactly like other human beings. Some of them are... I'm sure they're very nice so, men. Some of, no, some of them, some of them pitch, aren't very nice men. And some of them are. I don't think you can... Oh, tar- well, are you no, mingling with referees, by the way? It was a, uh, it was a project referees I used to do. Referees convention. It actually was. <laughs> I went to a... What are you doing at a referees convention? I, I did, a bit of, uh, did a bit of work for the Referees Association uh, a long time ago. It was... Uh, it was a project on, on referees and psychology and fitness and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, we digress. You playing up to your podcast image there, going to, <laughs> going to refereeing conventions. It was a referee convention. It was like a training day. Did you only fold a bike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what I'm saying is some have attitudes, some don't. You can't tar every ref in the championship okay. with, with that kind. I've just done it. I, would, I don't agree with you. This referee in particular. Right. It's, they are all awful in the championship. Honestly, that, I mean that's not true. That's who, fundamentally it not isn't. true. I mean, it is it true. isn't. It yeah, is you're true. right. As someone that goes every two weeks to Villa Park and watches the officiating, they're garbage. They want to make it all about them. No, I've seen a lot of good referees who don't make it all about. This might be an isolated incident. You might be right, and this, well, this ref- and you always are. Someone in the comments said where this referee is now. Referee, referee of the weekend was it Wickham or, so, or the, somewhere the, like that? The EFL has been dropped. He, that decision well, yeah. smacked up. Ooh, I sent their player no. up in the first half. I better, I better even this up. Again, that challenge is a yellow card every week in any league. It happens all the time. No, it maybe, doesn't. Maybe, it doesn't maybe happen it was slightly every time. more. There's always a cynical one when someone's running through. It wasn't last man. It doesn't matter about being last man. It was serious it was intentional. foul. It was, it was serious foul play, is what it was. And that's that's a S one. That's a red I mean, card. I think if he could have took his shirt, according back. to the referee's convention guide, <laughs> I think if he could have took his shirt back. Lansbury and just got booked for that. He would have done that, but he obviously wasn't going to catch him, so he just tripped him. Yeah, exactly. well, trip. He didn't trip him, though. He scythed him. Oh, anyway, the game's let's, gone. let's move on. Just say Lansbury was having actually his best game I've seen him have before, yeah. before then. I agree, and I think that's what annoyed me more. But um, what I will say is, and this is the last point on it, I don't like the argument either that the referee was just trying to even things up. I think that's, well, a, I think that's a simplistic argument. I'm not, being, I'm not being funny, but with the card being rescinded, is that not what the Football Association is saying? The, the Football Association, I'm really surprised that they have rescinded that. They don't rescind things easily, no, so they, that tells you... And, and I agree with you there. Um, and I'm surprised by that. Good for us, but, uh, but, but I'm surprised. I'm not sure he'll play now. Yeah. But well, it gives us another option, and a lot of people Bruce are talking about... Bruce blame it all on him? The fact that we didn't win the game. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't like that either. <laughs> but, but it's just coming onto a I'm thing. Pre- I'm pretty sure Henry Lansbury's not too keen on it either. No, but if, if Lansby had been out, you're looking then at Whelan and Yedinak as your centre mid. Too good to see Yedinak back. Yeah, I was going to come on to that. The actually. game didn't suit him in the end because Middlesbrough went down to ten men, so we didn't need that defensive screener. Which again, that was encouraging. But I think he made the right subs at half time. Just don't see why we didn't do that. I mean, I know you can't make a sub after three minutes, but after 20 or so minutes, just make the sub. We've got 11 v 10. Take advantage of it. Make the most of it. Well, he's shown he's done early subs before, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah. You know, with the Samba thing not working. professional enough to... He would have trotted off after 20 minutes and just thought, OK, the team is more important. Go for it earlier. It's no good going for it at half-time because then, obviously, after 20, 25 minutes, we've ended up going out to 10 men, which was always a chance of it happening because that ref was stupid mm-hmm. and he was always looking to even it up. 
Despite what, despite your love of referees, <laughs> I don't love referees. I just give them a fair I credit. Bet you didn't have uh, like posters of players, <laughs> new players on your wall. I bet you had a, a, a Jeff, Jeff Winter, a Uriah Rennie sh- shrine in your uh, wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, that's with me. All your black refereeing kits lined lined up. Yeah, Mark Halsey yeah. all over the Good wall. Friend of the channel, Mark Halsey. Oh, he's not. A, he's not jumped up though. Is he, he wasn't in the championship, was it? Well, he's saying, never I'm in saying, the championship. I don't know, but I'm saying he's not in there now. I'm saying the championship referees at this current stage. There's some good refs in the prem. Right. And let me tell you, if we ever fortunate enough to get promoted, I'm not going to criticise the referees. They must come from somewhere. We'll, we'll, we'll never know. Um, I thought it was interesting what Max Roberts said. Good to see him back on the fan cams. Um, the old fan cams. He does, that. doesn't he? Can tell. He gave a shout he out to his man demo or something like that. Yeah, I remember one fan cam's early doors that I did, where he, he was waiting in the queue, and he, ca- and he came up and he went, it's Max, Maxi time. He said that. It's Max. He loves fan cams. I can't believe he's I, good though. He's good. I can't good believe value. I just said man him. No. Um, what he did say North was the referee convention. <laughs> what he did say was um, the fans are Villa's worst asset at the moment, which I thought was. I a don't re- think that's fair. I, I thought it was an in- really I, interesting say, I, thing to say. I'm. Well, you can't say that when we're 18th in the championship. The fans are the worst thing about the club because it's not true, is it? We're 18th right. in the championship, and I'm the one who's levelled this thing at the fans be- before. But I think there's a tipping point at some point, and it's not the board that are theirs now is full but we had six seven years of absolute rubbish mm. and the fans are, are, are fed up they are fed up i'm fed up i can only speak for my own personal view is that in the last in that four day period i, tra- I traveled 500 miles watched two nil nils at villa park spent spent money and on fuel and the ticket obviously yeah and, and whatnot and it, it isn't good enough no especially when i'm expecting that stay i was expecting that statement month, we're going to come out and we're really going to have a go. Because before the international break, I said this on fan cams, I saw signs of encouragement. We won 4-2 against Norwich, went 1-0, one, one down against Bristol, and previously that would have led to defeat. We got ourselves back quickly to 1-1. One, one. And I felt good going into, national, into the international break. And we come back after it first game and revert to type, sitting deep, mm-hmm. for whatever reason. And that's not good enough. And it's worrying. We don't ever get a consistent run of results. Yeah, before we get into the comments from uh, Middlesbrough's fan cam, uh, Jonathan Codger returned. Good. Good sign. Looks sharp. Yeah. And uh, uh, like you said, he'll be back in Carabao Cup action next week. We've also got Barnsley before. I don't think he'll start. You don't think he'll start? I wouldn't have thought so. Be on the bench and come on again. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could say how desperate they were to get him on because we went down to 10 men and had one natural central midfielder on the pitch. But we shuffled it around so that we could still get Codger on instead of bringing Whelan on. Mm-hmm. Because he wanted to get Codger on and get that reaction from the fans, try and galvanise the fans. It's fair to Codger, he looked good. He looked very good, considering how long he's been out and he hasn't had any pre-season mm-hmm. at all. He looked sharp and obviously had a really good chance with a good header that was a good save. Yep. So it's, it'll, it'll make a difference having him back. Obviously, it'll be huge. But then I think someone else has said this in the comments. If he gets injured... We can't be so reliant on one man, and we shouldn't be so reliant on one man. Yeah, Bruce said after the game, it's a huge frustration for us, the chances we create and we don't score. I've said since I've been here that we're over-reliant on Jonathan Codger, but at least he's back for us now. The, that last sentence annoyed me a little bit, at least he's back now. It's kind of like, we shouldn't be over-reliant on him, but we are, so that's that. The main man, you take the main man out of any team, they're going to be worse off for it, but team we've got and the squad we've got we shouldn't be as worse off as we are when he's not playing and we also had a pre-season you know that we knew that we wouldn't have Jonathan Codger we should have been ready to set up in a similar system you know or or whatever whatever works but we should have found that that rhythm in our pre-season and and we just haven't well you look at the team that started the first game I don't think we've seen that team again well, obviously because yeah. Bakun has gone for one well that'll be one of the reasons but yeah. it was Gabby on the left Hogan up front that, up front that day I think Gabby's days on the left are pretty much behind him, to be honest, anyway. But this thing I'm saying again about the changing teams, it does mm. seem that Bruce doesn't know his his best team. He should at least have the eight or nine that he's going to rely on for the whole season. Because you have the core. Yeah. The core shouldn't change. And I know Terry, Chester, Johnston, that hasn't changed. Taylor at left back. God forbid if anything happens to him because we haven't got another left back. But the rest of it's all pretty much been up in the air. And I'll... I mean, I said when we picked the teams and said what we think our best team was, it's a difficult task, but we're not football managers. Mm. So it's his job to know his best team. It's literally his job. Uh, let's go on to some comments. Rex Colt uh, says, Poor Hogan, nothing is going his way. Lol. Uh, it's, the, it's the Villa curse. Not long ago, many people were saying we'll make the playoffs and stick by Bruce. What about now? I'd be surprised if Villa finish in the top half this season. Say to that really, yeah, there's not a lot you can we'll say. T- I think we'll be in the top half, but 
oh, God knows what's going to happen and how it's going to happen and who's going to be here and whatnot. Guy Jones, our home form is so vital because of how awful we are away from home. Under Bruce, with his tactics and style, I can't see anything other than another mid-table finish. We're not even entertaining. I, I disagree a little bit with that. We've shown we've shown flourishes of being entertaining. It's not it's not it's not consistent for sure, but we have shown that we can play some nice football. So I'd say whole game against Norwich, good football. I'm ignoring the cup. Okay. I'm not even taking that into consideration. First half against Hull. Second half against Bristol. If I'm being kind, mm-hmm. I thought we could have gone on to win that game. And then second half against Middlesbrough. But you kind of discount Middlesbrough a little bit because they're 10 men. Well, we had 10 men for some yeah, To be honest, we were, still, we were still playing nice football with 10 men mm-hmm. in 10 on 10, in fairness. So there's a lot of halves there where we haven't been entertained. Well, this so is what the I'm inconsistency, saying. that's yep. what we're saying. That's what I don't understand. It's the inconsistency, and it's so frustrating as a fan because you can't do anything about it. Uh, the plump chicken can't fault players. They tried their, tried their socks off. Uh, Lansbury shouldn't have been sent off. Unnecessary booking at the end of the game. You better have a go at plump chicken for about Lansbury. Oh, and sorry, and unnecessary booing at the end of the game, not booking. Um, I don't think that was everyone. I think it was a vocal minority, and the claps rung through in the end, and there was no booing of the players when they came up at the Middlesbrough game. Uh, Tom Sharp, I'm getting sick of reading such unbelievably negative comments from Villa view uh, v- from Villa fans. <laughs> <laughs> they are they are the kind of comments City fans make. It equates. In negativity, um, so no wonder we can't catch a break. Villa can still do something this season, but we have to believe without that, then forget it. I mean, there's 39 games left, but we're going to have to go on an incredible run for automatic. Incredible. We'd have to win half of the games we've got left, maybe. Mm-hmm. Off the top of my head, that's a guess. It's, I don't know. It, yeah, it kind of depends who runs away with it, doesn't it? Like if you've got Leeds, are obviously looking very good at the moment. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah, even without Chris Wood. Well, they got a new guy, the guy over from uh, I can't remember where they got him from. He looked good. The big lump. He's got a couple. <laughs> the big lump. He's got a couple of the weekend. Oh, he did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Grass. 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 Uh, that's a Brighton guy, maybe. Oh uh, yeah. Don't know. His no, name. you're right. The number nine. Good. He looked good though. Anyway. Uh, good to see a return of the Bardell Lynch axis. Yeah. Happy with that. Yeah, uh, and Max back to really looks like the championship has moved on. All the recent promoted teams uh, play decent football. Bruce's tactics feel dated. I admit I didn't see that before he was appointed, so I won't blast Wyness and Round. But it does look like we need to move on. Borough game individually not a disaster, but the overall picture is pretty clear. I like to see managerial loyalty, but this isn't a blip in form. It's interesting. Skirt that's and eighteen. Comment, that is. Yeah, that's, that's really good comment. In the middle of that, I think that's what we've already touched on, isn't it? And. Uh, and obviously, he's he's kind of coming to the end of his tether a little bit. Do you want one more? I mean, just to build on that comment, Sorry, little, this is what on. we were saying off camera before we before we started. You draw with Middlesbrough; they're going to be up there at home in isolation. It's not a bad result. When you put all these results together, it is a bad result. Yeah. And the circumstances of them having ten men, and we didn't do anything in that first half. Yeah, one more. We've got to get it together. No, yeah. One more for you. CM Dell, Villa have spent more than any team in the championship history and still find themselves being woefully mediocre. Now they're in danger of not getting promoted, running out of parachute payments and being stuck in the second tier for decades like Leeds. Every season it gets harder to get up with three richer Premier League clubs dropping down every season. Don't necessarily disagree with that last point. There's more and more money in the Premier League. And if you invest it right, you need to get out fairly quickly. Premier League now is racing away from us. The quality. You stay, you, you stay out there too long and now with the money that's there being absolutely incredible. If we go back up, it's going to be a big ass to stay there first time round. I'm, yeah. I'm, I mean, let's hope we do go back up, but at the moment it's not looking likely. Yeah, and you also obviously. you have to nail your transfer window, don't you? If, if hypothetically you do go back up, you need to spend well because the class, the golfing class is, is, is there... And you need to invest in two, three quality players. Like, say, again, hypothetically, we go up. We don't. We have some older legs in there. Yednak, um, Terry, Agbon Lahore. These kind of players. Agbon Lahore less so, maybe. But Whelan. And you're going to have to reinvest in, in some of your core positions. And that's, that's a challenge as well. And you need to nail that to even just then survive in the Premier League and not face another battle going back down. I mean, I tweeted it last night. Remember seven, eight years ago, Villa were competing with Spurs. For fourth, yeah. Look at where Spurs are now and where we are. Yeah, absolute light years ahead. 
We might as well be playing different sports. To be fair, that's how far away. Yeah, how far away from, yeah, it's, 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 from, from where we are. It's very disappointing that, isn't it? And and you're right. We, I, I mean, I remember those heady days as well when we had a bunch of the England quartet midfield, um, and it was a, it was an exciting time to be a Villa fan. Obviously, it didn't quite come to fruition, and all ended a bit sour with uh, with Martin O'Neill. But yeah, now it feels a very long long time ago that. Really upset again. No, you. I've been all week. Do you want a hug? Nah. No. No. Okay. I'm. I'm a bit ill. I don't think that made me feel better. No, it certainly won't. Flew me up. Um, I I was speaking to, speaking to a guy uh, who wants to remain nameless the other day, but he's a bit. He reckons he's a bit of a ITK. And in the know for oh, those, really? that, that, yeah. And Chris Dolan is it? It's not like there's no. He was he was saying British Samba longer. Um, good player. Very good player. He was saying if uh, that he he thinks that British Samba longer will get twenty goals minimum this year, uh, and and be like one of the stars of the championship. There was just one point where he turned Terry on a sixpence on Tuesday, and then and then ran through and had that had that shot which he blasted uh, at Johnston. Yeah, I mean Johnston did well save it. But I think Lynch had him down as his top. Championship goal scorer. Oh, possibly. really? Could be wrong. There, I'm sure he had a Samba longer. Mm. He had, had a bit of Nottingham Forest knowledge, didn't he? Yeah. Living in Nottingham, so mm. yeah, he's pulled that to go for a Samba longer. Good player. Yep. Why well, does that person want to remain nameless? It's not like he's come in with a. That's some, a yeah, that's, that's, that's secret true. information. It's just an opinion. <laughs> yeah, well, he, I thought you were going to be telling me some kind of. You know, he's a mystery man. Massive. He's a mystery man. What, what else you got on your list there, Dan? Uh, got a few things, but probably the main one to mention. We usually do a whole video on it but I don't think they would, went no, down that well views wise Right. so I went to the fans consultation group before the Middlesbrough game so the I don't know I'm not going to say important that's the, the wrong word so some of the more well known supporters groups and web- websites and what, what not went down to meet with Keith Wyness Luke Organ Steve Round actually couldn't make it in the end Tommy Jordan Lee Priest so some key personnel at, at Villa so we've got people like David Michael from My Old Man Said was there. Steve Goff from the Aston Villa Independent Supporters Trust. You've got Hero, people from Heroes and Villains. Jonathan Fair from Vital Villa. So we spoke about this before, but we went down and had a, had a meeting. So there's an agenda set before the, before the meeting. So I'll just run through a few of the... Uh, Give us the highlights. A few of the points, because there's 20 points here. Yeah. And not all of them are going to be... Been, and we've already hit 42 minutes. But it's gone fast, that has. <laughs> it's gone really fast. So the Villa engine came up obviously Keith Wyness has been talking about the Villa engine on the official site recently we were told by Keith Wyness that there's going to be a separate meeting to talk about talk about this to go over the Villa engine so the Villa engine for those that don't know is uh, is basically the PR slogan that Villa are getting behind isn't it it's everything behind the scenes as well as on the pitch it's kind of creating that Villa way of playing football right yeah so on and off the pitch from the youth team building towards the first team but one thing I have said here is we recognise there is a short-term imperative to get promoted and that means the total concept may not manifest itself in the first team as yet. So basically it's promotion at the cost of everything else at the moment, but hopefully we'll get to go to the meeting about the Villa Engine. Steve Round will engage with us and give us some more information about that. It'd be something that would be really interesting to learn about because, to be fair, people have been asking... I'm one of the fans that's been saying we need something running through the club, a, a way of playing, a... A method methodology. I can't remember, like, terrible at saying that word. Methodology. Yep, good. Around the club, and a bit like Southampton. Whatever happens to Southampton, they seem to steadily do the same, don't they? Yep. They don't ever seem to get worse, even though they lose players and managers every summer. So you need that bit of fluidity running through the club, and hopefully the Villa engine will be that. Yep. Uh, one of the questions that went in was, what is the situation being reported at the moment about the Chinese government clamping down on investment in football clubs? How will this impact us? Basically, it's not going to impact us at all because Dr Tony's done things a, d- a different way to some of the other Chinese investors in, in the Midlands and AC Milan's obviously one of the ones that's been invested by, by Chinese people mm-hmm. recently so we're not part of that targeted group so that isn't going to affect the club at all which which is really good uh, Pride Rewards came up, is there any plans to align the Pride Rewards game with Villa Tickets and Villa's retail merchandise, basically at the moment that we're the first club that's used the new the new card technology so we're the only club club using it so the card's ever changing it's going to evolve so there's going to be different things coming with it in time what you see at the moment isn't necessarily what you're going to get yeah. for the long term so it's always always going to change yep. and just uh, 
talking of the pride rewards, there was um, some things went on before the Brentford game. So there was people took up some of the pride rewards season ticket holders. So there were 65 fans in the corner flag for a pre-match season ticket holders event. And I actually went to that event and it was really, really good. Really got me in the mood for the game. And ultimately the game was poor. But it was a really, really good event for season ticket holders. So any season ticket season ticket holder can put their pride reward points towards going to these events before the games in the corner flag restaurant with legendary Mick Dale emceeing and hosting the event. If you have most people will know Mickey's because he's a legend. Yeah. Round Villa, you know him. Obviously, such such a great guy. Real. He loves a, it. Pass him as a friend now. He just loves Villa. Oh, he really well, does. Never, I mean, I think I love Villa, but Mick's even a million times away from me. He's a million times away from anyone. Mick's love. Yeah. For the game of football and the love of Villa and. Um, there's ex-players floating around, so I had my photo taken with Dennis Mortimer and Peter With, so that was that was great to meet two absolute Villa legends. But there's there's other things going on as well. Two fans had dinner at the B and B, and sorry, two dinner, two din. I can't talk. Two, two fans, fans had dinner and bed and breakfast at the Belfry and stayed the night. Right. The Belfry, thanks to their rewards. There was eight fans giving a guard of honour to the players before the game. Twenty five fans had the name in the program and a shout out at half time. Two fans on the pitch having a half time selfie in front of the whole end. And five thousand pounds worth of Under Armour products were collected at the rewards point. So it's good stuff because yeah. it's before the season ticket. We didn't get anything. Yeah. Now we're getting stuff, and it's going to evolve through time. And they're going to act on feedback. And apparently, the card's going to act on your pa- your pattern. So if I buy a Bovril before every game, but people will get to learn that about me through the through the season ticket, and I'll get vouchers through for a free Bovril because they know that's what I like. Yeah, exactly. It's a good thing. These uh, essentially what what the, what Dan's saying there is is these. The, the voucher system is a bit like cookies on on your internet, right? Everything is monitored yeah. kind of to what you like, and then your your fan experience is tailored um, to 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 make or hopefully make your your uh, your trip to Villa Park better. That's that's kind of what they're what they're aiming at, and and it will constantly change. But feedback is really really important at these kind of events, and for you guys letting us know what you think, letting the club know what you think. That's why fan channels and um, communications like on Twitter and stuff are really, really important. We uh, have a great privilege to be able to let the club know what we think. Yeah, and so do let us know because we didn't get many comments this time. We didn't yeah. get much feedback. So we did leave it a bit late, to be fair, to ask for it. But yeah, anything you want us to ask the club, we can try and get it incorporated into these meetings. They, they happen on a fairly regular basis. So we want your feedback because we want to try and make the experience better for the Better for the fans, and the club want that. Yeah, as totally. Well, to be fair, even if you don't use the Villa View, to, uh, speak speak to the club or speak to Mild Man says or somebody yeah, because other websites it, as well, yeah. exactly Where, wherever you communicate your Villa uh, fandom through, there's there's opportunity there to be fed back to the club, and and that only makes the club stronger, and you know it's a positive impact at the end of the day. I mean, I'll make sure this gets put on put on the website actually because there's some interesting interesting stuff on there and it's I mean, not beneficial for us to sit here and go through it all yeah. on the on the podcast but I think the Commonwealth Games looks like it's coming to Birmingham but I, look, I think that's going to be a chance for the club to get involved with some stuff mm-hmm. so that would be good that would be good great as well the Villa Foundation are doing some doing some good stuff we actually should have a video coming pretty soon so we're doing some stuff next week all being well at the moment with the foundation so hopefully you'll see that up on the channel on the channel soon I'll make sure this gets put up and yeah, we'll we'll discuss it maybe another time. Yeah, you've got another shout out to do. Yep, I have. It's all go. It's all it's, it's all go on Bardell's, busy, Bardell's phone here. <laughs> so, friend of the channel, Mike Pearson. Hello, Mike and family. Has asked me to uh, shout out the fifth annual North American Lions Club meetup that's taking place at Texas this weekend of the Barnsley game. So it sounds like a really really good in Austin. In Austin, Austin, Texas. Yeah, I probably should have said where. Yeah, it is. So Texas is massive. If you happen to be a Villa fan in America and can get there this weekend, then I'd advise that you do. Um, it's happening this weekend. Villains from all over America and Canada will be there. And a few apparently from Ireland and the UK, in particular Kidderminster, are coming for a holiday too. Tons of drinking, eating, sunshine and Villa, so it's pretty much the perfect weekend. What I'd more? Really, what I'd more really like to have gone myself. Actually, Kurt, the Austin Lions Club chairman, has organised the event, so congratulations to him. And they've raised 10k over the years for Acorns at these events, so they're looking to raise some money for our for the charity Acorns again at this event. So yeah, if you can get there and you are one of the Villa View subscribers and or podcast listeners that's from America, get yourself there. Yeah, and and let us know how it was. Let us know how it goes. Um, and well done, well done for raising so much money. That's awesome. We love it. Yeah, we do. And Mike's a very good guy. Yeah, he can't make it actually. He can't make it that weekend, but he's a local Brummer who. Uh, 
lives out in in America. He's from De- Detroit. Yeah, yeah, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit, so, Michigan. I suddenly had a thought. I was in Canada then. That's really bad. My geography nah. and maths has not come through. Nah, Midwest, mate. Today. Midwest. Yeah. Anything else we want to talk about? We should probably go to questions. To be fair, shouldn't we? Yeah. More than anything, because we are running out of time. Forty nine minutes has absolutely flown by today, Thomas. Do we have questions? Oh yeah, of course yeah, we I do. Put a late tweet out. Oh yeah, a late tweet. No one reminded me. <laughs> Sorry, mate. It's all right. Not your mum. I know. Uh, I mean, we've covered Bruce a little bit, I suppose. But Roger Wheeler said, "Only one from me, Dan. How much longer can Bruce survive if we remain winless? Let's be realistic. We now need a few wins on the bounce." I think you're absolutely correct, Roger. I think obviously, if we don't, if we go the next two two games without a win, I say he's in big trouble. Big, big trouble because, as you say, it was a state. As we've said, it's a statement month, and we've not made a statement <laughs> yeah. thus far. I don't. And Bruce will know himself. He's running out of time. Oh yeah. Uh, the the thing with Bruce is you can hear it in his post match press conferences and stuff. He's a little bit snipey, isn't he? He doesn't. It's not it's a bit defensive. A bit defensive is yeah. a better word. Yeah. Um, and and you can tell that he he feels the pressure. But I mean that's that's part of the job, and and he's done it before, and he's he's felt the pressure before, and he sorted it out. So. You know, he, he knows how to win in this league and I'm just hoping he can put the bits together. This is the biggest club he's managed by far. He said that he said that himself and I think he's trying to show that it's not out of his comfort zone at the moment. And I like that he's fighting back. I actually like that mm-hmm. because it shows a good, good, strong character and I do like that from him. I do think some of the stuff he said is a bit strange and I don't necessarily agree with all the stuff he's said. But he's got to turn it around quick because we will. He will not have expected this bad start. Mm-hmm. He will not have anticipated that this was what was what was going to happen to us. Yep. He'd have been. He'll have been positive that we'd have got off to a good start. So he'll be as surprised as anyone. We've kind of covered the booing from Villa Mad three. I, I, I think the same. I think some fans do enjoy it. And I think it's been detrimental to the club in the past, but I don't think it can be blamed for performances at the moment. If I'm being completely honest. Uh, Is the season already over from Andrew Tava? No, it's not easy. It's no. 39 games left. Right. We're, and we've still got four games just this month. You know, like it's... We're in the middle of September. You know, it's not over. We've been we've been going a month or so. And uh, we've, got, we've got time to turn it around, but it does need to happen. And performances need to need to be positive. I said something about the games running out that someone questioned on fan cams for the Middlesbrough game. And it may be right to question it. A little bit. What I'm saying is, for automatic promotion, already the games are running out because you get that big gap. We had a big gap from the autos last year, and we didn't make it back. And exactly the same thing will happen again. That's what I meant by that comment, just to clarify it a little bit. Oms has said, "Why don't we just give O'Hare a chance behind Hogan?" Wouldn't surprise me if we saw it at some point. Was we'll definitely see it in the cup. Mm-hmm. As I say, we change the team around so much that. There's no stability. It may be a combination that we see yep. at some point in the league, but I don't think Ho- O'Hare's seen as a first-team player this season, if I'm being totally honest, especially when we've got as many players as we have. Uh, maybe we should cover Hogan a bit more in the next one because a few people have asked mm-hmm. about him. I feel like we talked about Hogan a lot in yeah. the early stages, didn't we? And, yeah, and, uh, I still stick by him. I think he's a good player, but we don't play in a way that suits his game. There was one point which, which, which was really frustrating. A, cr- a cross came in um, and... He just kind of miskicked it, and it yeah, just kind of good chance. bumbled off, and it's just like, oh, that was a good chance. Why are experienced managers always what Villa look towards? Is this short-sighted with the amount of young European coaches around? That's come from Dean, AVFC. I mean, I've never been Bruce's biggest fan pre-Villa, in all honesty, but I think we can all agree that at the time, it was a sensible and logical appointment. Yeah, that has a, clearly it's not gone as well as Villa would have expected. It's not gone as well as Steve Bruce. Would have expected it's not obviously not gone down well with the fans, but I don't, I don't think we can be too critical of the appointment because I think it made sense at the time and he got off to the to a reasonably promising start, but then since then it hasn't gone right and he, Steve Bruce would be the first to say that it hasn't gone right. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Um, do you want to take any? Do you think the Lansbury deserves to be sent off? I just see Mazes. Uh, Marlon Hale has been included in one. Has he? Yeah. We've lost touch with Marlon a bit over the last few weeks. He's not I, even been liking the tweets. I assumed you were going to get him in next week when I'm not here. Oh, yeah, we've got a problem next week. If anyone's got any ideas <laughs> of what we can do next week with no time, I'm not sure. Sh- I'm going to give Tom a bit of praise yeah. here. I'm not sure I've got the uh, 
presenting now to just do it on my own wow. for a podcast. That's, that feels fact, great. Thanks. I mate. think my football opinions are better than yours. I think your presenting style is better than mine. Okay. That's why I think we make a good team. Ah, oh, great. Yeah. You well, happy with that? Yeah. I'm not, not. Yeah. Um, go on. Give us one more. One, one more because we uh, we need That's to get out of here. People say this. Assuming we get Moyes if, if Bruce goes, this has come from Gareth Watkins. Are we better sticking with Bruce or bringing in Moyes? I've always liked David Moyes until the last few years, but I would not want him anywhere near the hot seat. I'm now. glad you uh, glad you finished that sentence because so Moyes, stay away from my club. Yeah, we don't want David Moyes, and I don't think I think if the if the were if if Bruce went, I don't think it would be David Moyes. No, I think you'd see the opposite kind of appointment to so that kind of kind of manager. What a young. Attacking, exciting kind I of I mean, manager. I'm just going to use them as an example. I mean, Crystal Palace actually really likes Steve Parrish. I think he's a really good chairman. Right. And I believe that what's happened with Frank De Boer has come from the American owners, not him. Right. So they've obviously gone the route of, we want to create a philosophy, we want to create a new way of playing, a long-term appointment, a young, exciting manager, getting Frank De Boer. Four games in, that supposedly hasn't worked. It's ridiculous. We better, get it. we better get in a safe pair of hands. Yeah. Something completely different to what we've just just gone with so you end up with the opposite and, that, and a lot of football clubs tend to do that we did it Tim Sherwood went we went Remy Gard we did Gerard Julio went we got an Alex McLeish all terrible terrible some terrible appointments yeah. in there to be fair people flip flop between the two but that Fran de Boer stuff I just want to say an absolutely outrageous four games is just incredible especially when they, they made quite a big deal I think in the summer they took quite a long time to find their ideal man, you yeah. know, they they had a short list which was absolutely massive, and and they they went for De Boer, fine. Four games is just farcical. Nobody can imagine you going into work and and trying to, I don't know, manage somebody for for two three weeks or three days, kind of three individual games, whatever, and uh, you just can't build a relationship. You can't build. Uh, a philosophy or a way of playing, like we talk about the Villa engine, it doesn't come overnight. These kind of these kind of uh, changes in, in in infrastructure, and it just seems bizarre to me. I mean, I really like Crystal Palace. I think they're a good club. I like the fans, but I think they I think they look stupid mm. with what's happened. Oh, definitely. Especially the worst thing about it, it's not the fact that okay, they've lost they've lost four games in a row, and you could almost just accept it if they've been garbage in all four of those games. But in the Burnley game. There were signs of improvement. They should have won that game. I think Sean Dyche said as much mm-hmm. after the match. It's not Frank De Boer who's there missing the really good chances. It's yeah, the, it's the players. Yeah, there's, the players, there's no competition. And that to terrible the pass back that, oh. that, that led to the oh, goal. What can Frank De Boer do about, yeah. those, about those things? You can't make a big deal about changing the whole philosophy of the club and then bin him after four games. Yeah. I go for I go for a dinosaur for want of a better word. Roy Hodgson, who's damaged goods, looked awful for England. They'd probably do okay at Palace, but they were surely they were setting up for a transitional season. And the, the, so they were obviously going to be towards the bottom. Yeah, just go with it. The thing is that they've sacked him after the, that's probably the best game that they've that looks like they've played. Yeah. Which is he De Boer must be like just so frustrated at how that's ended. I think that's. It's made disappointing. Yeah, it's made him I look stupid. The him. club and uh, and yeah, they've it's damaged they've his locked reputation. Yeah, good young, good young coach. Reputation damaged when he's doing what's been asked. Yeah, change of philosophy. Change, change what we're doing. Harsh. Anyway, it's turning to the Crystal Palace. Yeah, podcast. Uh, we haven't mentioned, end. and I want to keep this under an hour if we can. But we, it would be remiss of us not to mention Andre Green uh, oh. had hamstring surgery after the Brentford game. He posted a picture um, on Instagram the other day of given the thumbs up, but he's going to be out for several months, Bruce confirmed. So really, really disappointed to see him and Jack Grealish on the uh, on the injured list. Uh, we wish them both well and hope hope we see them before too long. Well, I've heard Green's four months. Right. I'm not sure how true that is, but I've heard it's four months. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't expect it anytime soon. It was pretty serious surgery. So but Grealish was back at Bodymore on Sam Johnson's uh, Instagram Great today, so maybe he's further ahead than we think because I think we need him back. Mm-hmm. Although I'm pretty sure in some of the games that we've played where the football's been so bad, he wouldn't have made a difference. Yeah, But everyone knows me. I love Super Jack, so I want to get him back in the team. Absolutely. Well, I think he's good good for the team and, and hopefully we'll see him back soon. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for joining us this week. We appreciate it. We're on to Burnley uh, next week. No, and we're not. Barnsley. Uh, Barnsley. Oh, what a poor finish. Neely. What a poor finish. Um, Don't edit that out, Dan Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> Please um, let us know your comments. Let us know your thoughts on the Lansbury sending off, on the on the form, on Bruce, on, on everything, Villa. We love to, we love to hear what from you. What to do next week. 
yeah, give with the podcast. Give Dan some ideas. I'll be sunning myself uh, from Costa Brava, although that doesn't look that hot. Um, if you need me, give me a call. You know, I'm here for you. We'll cope. Yeah, we'll cope. All right, for sure. Cool. Should we go? Right. Yeah, let's let's do one. Thank you. As Tom says, I echo everything you just said. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Up the villa. Up the villa. I'll salute. <laughs> <laughs> I always give it a little salute. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left. Easy peasy.